Welcome, everybody, to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Mwagoya. Thank you so much for joining me. another special episode of the Farming Podcast. Tonight, we are on episode 123. Um, we're fast approaching the 150th episode, and I really hope that you're enjoying all the conversations that we've had on the podcast thus far. Today, we're joined by an, an agri-entrepreneur, um, Bruce Diale, who is a CEO of Brucol Global Development. And we'll be speaking everything around agribusiness and access to markets and farming and any entrepreneur's journey. You know, access to market is quite a critical component towards any business because without customers, you have no business. And more so, it's said that, you know, the agriculture industry is quite a very difficult industry to penetrate where markets are concerned. So I'm quite keen to hear what Bruce and um, his organization does, especially in the fact that they work around the rural development space. Um, so it would be interesting to know what work do they do, how do they uplift communities within the in the rural areas, and how are they, as an agribusiness, um, you know, generating and operating in the space, more so how they're providing access to markets, not only for sales, but maybe the farmers that they support or the entrepreneurs that they support on the ground. And so if you have any questions, please feel free to comment on the uh, comment box below and um, you know, reach out to Bruce at the end of the show if you found any synergies and ways to create. However, let's get straight into it and uh, welcome Bruce to the podcast. How are you doing, Bruce? I'm good. Thanks, New Mbali. Thank you very much. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm doing good. Um, tell me, you are the CEO of Brocol Global Development. Brocol Global Development. What does the company do? Well, Brocol is an agribusiness consulting company, and our primary focus is to provide rural development support from an agricultural perspective to farmers and people living in the rural areas. You know, so we have those that are already existing in the farming space. And we also have those that are interested in getting into farming as a means to alleviate poverty and to access you know, um, a better future. So what we yeah. do, we provide training, skills development, you know, um, innovative solutions. And we also provide access to markets and access to finance for, for these farmers in the rural areas. Perfect. What type of training do you provide to the farmers and um, the farmers that you work with? Uh, just tell us a little bit about their demographics. Is it young people? Is it um, slightly older people? Is it people that are very experienced in the industry? Um, or is it just up and coming farmers? So generally, um, in the world, we have a challenge where about 78% of the farmers are, 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 are old and above the age of 75. So we have a lot of um, those who are above the age of 75 that are already farming and we're trying to help them, you know, uh, through accredited uh, skills development programs that are accredited through CETA. We're able to provide to them training programs that are in line with ways they can understand and that will teach them and make it better and easier for them to do what they're doing in agriculture. And then we also have a lot of females, young people, who we provide skills development to in agriculture to help them uh, introduce them into the agricultural space because most of them do have access to land facilities in the rural areas. But unfortunately, you find that they just don't know how exactly to go about the process of starting an agricultural venture. So, mm. so this training that we provide then makes that process much easier for them. Yeah. So you've mentioned that you're obviously coming up with a solution or providing a solution to the many problems that farmers in the rural areas face. Over and above just, uh, you know, understanding the, how the business operates at farm level. What are, the, what are the other challenges that you've experienced on the ground that farmers, particularly in the rural areas or the, the farmers that you're particularly dealing with, um, are faced with on a daily basis? So there are three key components that uh, these uh, rural-based farmers struggle with. Um, uh, the first one is they have very little access to information, and which is why we are providing um, the, the skills development programs that we have in place. And the second one is that they have very little access to markets, uh, primarily because of their remoteness of where they are 
you know, the lack of mm. access of roads and infrastructure and so on. So we then come up with ways to create, make it easy for them to have better access to markets by providing, you know, um, um, group um, holding services like logistics where we're able to help them take their produce in bulk from where they are mm. to, 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 to the markets. And then lastly, mm. the biggest challenge that they face is that, you know, access to financial support, especially because there's very little confidence from uh, a market perspective um, towards uh, eco-based farmers. So we uh, come up with our own uh, financial models that is, 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 is the risk uh, profiled towards supporting these rural-based farmers. And mm. it's, 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 it's something that uh, the market is looking quite forward to and the farmers mm. are benefiting from that because they're getting access to financial support, um, which generally they wouldn't. Right. So you mentioned three key components, right? It's access to markets, access to financial support, as well as um, they have limited access to information. Now, going back to the markets and the financial support specifically, um, do you find, do you go out and find markets for the farmers? Meaning, you know, do you, you look at what the farmers are growing in which seasons and the quantities, and then you're linking them up to the markets, which then obviously ties into the logistics. And if so, you know, how does your model work? Do you, the farmers have to pay you a sales fee, a percentage of the sales that they generate from their farm products? And also going into the financial support, are you drafting business plans for farmers? Are you seeking funding on their behalf? Or is uh, Bruco Global Development specifically funding or financing uh, the farmers in maybe short-term loans um, within anything? Are you just providing financing to the farmers directly from your entity? So, so what we do is that we have different models to approach all of these different um, questions. I mean, from an uh, access yeah. to market point of view. We have farmers that already they are, they are planting, already they have their own market. But unfortunately, due to the quantity and the frequency mm. of how often they have to go to the market, you find that they struggle to get transportation services um, that will link them with the, the relevant market. So when we come mm. in, we then help them to link their planting processes in such a way that they're able to be able to provide them with the logistic services that will help and to be able to get their product to that, they will then just be paying for the logistics. So basically, they will mm. be paying um, to have their product on the track. And then when it comes to access to finance, I mean, we, we, we're we really uh, are very diligent in selecting the farmers that we support financially. And in that process, we put together the business plans along with them looking at where they are and the growth models and so on. Mm. So we don't necessarily wait for farmers to come to us and say we are looking for financial support we look at the key areas and when we finance we finance them in a, in a group or in a bulk and mm-hmm. we'll have put together a, a business case around that on their behalf so they mm-hmm. wouldn't necessarily have to pay pay us uh, for that process yeah for interest sake uh, bruce which areas are you guys operating in we are currently operating in Limpopo, uh, Limpumalanga, okay. and we we've also had a couple of projects that we have done in KwaZulu Natal and the Gauteng province. But at this present at this present moment, uh, most of our work is concentrated around Limpopo and Limpumalanga province. Right, those are very nice areas with uh, good climatic conditions. Tell me, mm-hmm. as an agribusiness owner yourself, um, how are then you running your business? You know, how are you generating income? Are farmers paying you a consulting fee to assist them with access to information, markets, financial support, as you've mentioned, or do you have partners uh, that work alongside your brand and vision to us? that support you financially to be able to support the rural uh, rural uh, farmers? <laughs> Look, um, I, I, I wouldn't be too keen to share with my form business model because I wouldn't want yeah. to be inviting, you know, everybody to. Yeah, but, but what I can tell you is that, yeah. look, we are, we are operating profitably and um, there are ways to, to, to deal with these issues. You know, sometimes... Yeah. Um, the farmers are not always our customer, but they are our mm. beneficiary. So we have yes. many different institutions that want to support farmers. So, 
So we do that for them. I mean, we have uh, uh, the land bank is our client. The Department of Agriculture is our client. Different seaters are mm-hmm. our clients, you know. So so majority of our clients are corporate institutions that have mm-hmm. a rural developmental approach um, to, mm-hmm. to, to supporting people. So we mm-hmm. don't go to, benef- to, to these farmers and expect them to pay us a fee to provide them with skills development. For example, mm-hmm. through the CETA, we are able to uh, help them access discretionary grants um, mm-hmm. that are available through CETAs that that's actually taxpayers' money that they, they contribute through skills development levies. And mm. we help them access those funds in order mm. to provide um, skills development support to them. So there are many mm. various ways in which we, we, you know, we raise funds to implement these programs uh, because mm. we understand that the farmers themselves generally wouldn't be able to afford a six months or 12 months mentorship program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me, Bruce, like what's your background and how did you come about being in the agri sector? So I I studied a, a bachelor's degree in agriculture, and okay. and then yeah, and then I then studied a master's degree in business administration. Um, mm-hmm. But but I do come from a very strong agricultural background. I mean, uh, my father was an agricultural um, uh, scientist, so he worked as an agricultural advisor for more than mm-hmm. thirty years. So I was exposed a lot to the agricultural space, you know, by sometimes going to work with him, and mm-hmm. and then I mean, even in our in our in our house at our at our home, we've got quite a number of different fruit trees. So so you know, I, I grew up within that agricultural space, and my passion for agriculture, you know, just brewed uh, from from there. But yeah, from there. Uh, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, we've, we've, we've said it a couple of times throughout the podcast is that, you know, uh, the cost of farming is increasingly, is, is, is increasing, you know, month, month to month. And, uh, you know, it seems like rural farmers, I'm, I mean, are going to be left out. Farmers that don't have enough resources and capital or deep pockets are also going to be left out because of the high costs in farming. What's your view, especially working with farmers in rural spaces? What's your view on the, the, the projection in which the industry would be going in the next few years? Is it going to be difficult to access more markets, uh, you know, uh, or would, would markets become less, more lenient? What's, what's, what's the perception on the ground with, with rural farmers? Um, you know, do they have high hopes to continue to, to farm? You mentioned that your, your, a percentage of your, your clients or your beneficiaries are elderly people. Is there a sufficient plan maybe in the near future? for the elderly individuals to really pass down their agribusinesses to their uh, kids or their grandchildren. Um, just maybe just give us your opinion on what your, what your view on the agriculture sector looks like from teaching an elderly generation, helping farmers in rural spaces, and also just trying to navigate the high costs in farming these days. What's the solution that um, uh, Broco Global Development is coming up with? I think the question is is very it's a very important question uh, mm. uh, because um there's a lot of this you have to look at how the government is going to contribute to this whole process um yeah. uh, because understanding that the government itself has to play a huge role you know it's in subsidization and also in supporting initiatives that are geared towards ensuring that um these 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 rural farmers have access to to what they need. Mm. Um, so, 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 so the answer to that question is highly, 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 highly uh, focused on the level of support that these rural farmers will get, the level of uh, programs and the innovation in which these programs will be able to implement solutions that will make it easy um, for, for, for mm. farmers to have access to what they need. So um, I don't think the, the trajectory trajectory on its own can determine anything but if 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 there's enough support for initiatives to support rural based farmers and i think we are going to head in that direction primarily because mm. there's so much land that 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 uh, rural based people have access to and once there are programs in place to help them access markets and access finance then we'll be able to unlock this uh, potential uh, that these lands have, you know, to be able to eat these farmers to export, then uh, 
uh, essentially contribute to the uh, general economy at, at large. So it's, it's, it's entirely based on the support structure that's going to be present. And of course, companies like us and other companies that exist within the ag- uh, agricultural consulting space, how we are going to navigate around providing solutions that are going to make the sector better. Mm. And with your experience, is government really helping with your initiatives on the ground, um, especially in the regions that you've mentioned, like Limpopo and Bumalanga? Because, you know, we, uh, as just as farmers and individuals, government tends to get quite a lot of flack around their non-performance and non-delivery of the things that they said they will do. So maybe giving us a, an insight into the rural communities, is government, or maybe in this case, Department of Agriculture, playing a very critical role in uplifting the communities, or are they dependent on consultants and experts like yourself to tell them in which direction rural communities are going into, especially where primary or secondary agriculture is concerned? I think the problem with this is that, um, you know, there are always three sets of, of, of receivers to, to, to anything that comes up. You know, firstly, when the government comes up with programs, which I generally think they do have a lot of interesting programs and good programs that they're trying to come up with to fix the agricultural yes. uh, problems, um, people like myself, institutions like mine, some of them fail to understand the actual purpose of the project. And therefore, you find that the funds are, end up being misused and not fully uh, uh, doing what is supposed to uh, bring out the, the outcome that is anticipated by the institution themselves. And then sometimes mm-hmm. you find that the, the consultants fully understand the program, but the beneficiaries who, re- who are the recipients of the program fail to, 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 to understand and to, re- to, to fully you know, a grasp what is expected of them and what this program is meant to do for them. You'll find sometimes people have been funded um, and they'll use that money to pay for their ch- children's school fees or or, or, or or renovate their houses, you know? So, yeah. so, so all of these these things, it, and I've, I've, I, or I think that government has really played a huge role in coming up with support programs. But of course, due to high levels of corruption, and uh, mm-hmm. not only from the government's perspective, but also from consultants' point of view, and also from a lack of understanding and a mm-hmm. high level of 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 um, ex- I'm trying to find the right way where beneficiaries, you know, have this syndrome that uh, of entitlement, you know. So when yeah. they receive funds, they believe we we are entitled to this money, so we can do whatever it is we want with it. And sometimes mm. that derails, actually not sometimes, but most of the time, that derails um, the success of, of many of the initiatives that the government have come up with. Yeah. Um, I didn't ask you this before, and I think it's quite uh, critical to our discussion this, e- uh, this evening, is that um, what, the farmers that you work with, what type of commodities are they trading? Is it from grains, horticulture to livestock? Um, or is, it, is there a specific emphasis that uh, you particularly as an organization or an entity, focus on? We, 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 we work with farmers from all uh, commodity, commodities, okay. from cotton to livestock, um, wow. horticulture, grain farmers, you know, potato farmers. So we've got a vast array of different uh, farmers. We, we work with rural-based farmers. So it doesn't, it's not specific to, <laughs> To, to commodities, but any farmer who is from a rural area who operates within a rural spectrum and is trying to commercialize their operation, that is the person that mm. we, we we tend to focus on supporting. All right. Yeah. This in- conversation has been quite interesting. Uh, and um, yeah, thankful for the podcast because we wouldn't have known of individuals like yourself. But for farmers that are listening and watching the, the podcast episode, how do they get in touch with you? And for how long can they work with you? Is it like a, a fixed 12-month program, six-month program? Or they can continuously work with your organization um, you know, at every stages of their business life cycle in their farms? And also, are you only focusing on farmers? Or would you assist those entrepreneurs who've seen a problem in the agri space and have identified maybe a tech solution, a finance solution, but sort of need a big brother to help them, 
you know, overcome certain challenges that are, that they faced with in business, etc. So how do people reach out to you? And are you only focused on farmers or you are willing to consider and assist just general agripreneurs who are providing non-primary or production level um, uh, pri- services and products? So our 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 um, um, slogan is is innovating agriculture. You know that is okay. the heart heartbeat of, of of our operation. So any anybody or any entrepreneur or any organization that is is coming up with innovative agricultural solutions, we we are gladly, you know, our doors are always open to collaborate, to partner, mm. to support, to mentor, to assist. You know, because yeah. ultimately. Um, we cannot do it by ourselves, you know, to to bring yeah. this, this um, sector to where it's supposed to be. And then farmers, yes, farmers, our doors are always open to farmers to 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 come. We do host mentorship programs. Um, um, people are able to to book a session on our website, and we also oh. have different training programs that we have. So if people want to, you know, uh, come uh, for a one-on-one session. Um, they're able to book that on our website, uh, which I will give once you give me you know, permission to do so. Uh, but yes, yeah, you can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, on, on uh, our website is www.brookcall, which is B-R-U-C-O-L dot C-O dot C-D. Okay. And then, um, yeah, there, um, all our information is there, our, our, our landline, our office address, and our email addresses. Uh, everything is there for anybody who who is looking for assistance of any sort. Oh, Bruce, I think you're doing amazing work, and I think we need more organization and entrepreneurs like yourself assisting rural communities because at many times they're often left behind, even though there's a lot of focus um, towards rural communities, but you know some organizations have failed, some are not really getting it right for me, for a myriad of reasons. But yeah, thank you for coming onto the podcast and for sharing us your experience and the work that you're doing on the ground with rural communities. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. That was uh, Bruce Diale from uh, Brucol Global Development. Uh, if you missed their website, it's www.brucol dot co dot ca and bring call is b-r-u-c-o-l if you are a farmer an entrepreneur just needing some assistance business advice business guidance um just also uh, as a farmer uh, seeking assistance from access to information markets or financial support uh brew call is a company that you should reach out to because they have worked extensively with farmers within the Limpopo and Mpumalanga regions predominantly. And uh, um, yeah, I have major, major partners um, that are supporting the work, the land bank, um, all the CETA um, institutions. And so, yeah, if you're needing some upskilling, some training, some mentorship, some advice in, in terms of how you can grow your business or start that idea that you've been thinking of within the agri space, I think Bruce is someone that you could reach out to just to get a little bit of advice and uh, a different perspective and thinking. Uh, reach out to them and thank you so much for supporting the private property farming podcast if you missed this episode it is on our youtube channel on the under the farming podcast playlist and uh, the private property youtube channel please subscribe to our channel and support all the other podcasts that we have uh within the private property house or family group and uh, yeah keep following us keep following us on all our social media platforms um, and um, keep supporting the podcast Thank you so much. Take care.